Now, we've aligned ourselves with the Irish Freedom Party and our candidates are running in the next general election for the Irish Freedom Party. That's where we are now. And I'd like, Herman, if you could take over there now and have a chat there now and tell the people where we are. Go to Margaret. Thanks, Paul. So, my name is Herman Kelly. I'm president of the Irish Freedom Party. We started the party in 2000, at the end of 2018. Uh, myself, I have my dairy jersey on tonight, even though you can't see me. And, uh, well, well, the main, actually, I, I just, uh, I won't say, but I just, there was a senator in the house here just there about uh, about an hour ago. And basically, she was asking, the, the, what does the party stand for? I said the two main things we stand for are personal freedom and uh, national sovereignty. We believe that work should be rewarded, personal enterprise, uh, life should go on merit and the people who get up in the morning and go to work should be rewarded. Because of that, we are in favor of lowering the rate of personal taxation, that people get benefit from uh, from getting out, going to work and helping to support the family. We believe that uh, as no uh, country can have a future without children, we are pro-natalist, we are pro-life, we would like to help and encourage young couples to get married, start a family and build up the nation and build up the culture of Ireland by their how they educate their children, be that at home, and as parents are the primary educators of their of their children, that it's parents who should decide on the education and only to build up, educate their children in, uh, in, the, in the culture of Ireland and that's how we build up Ireland demographically and, and, and culturally uh, and try to inculcate in our children a pride in where they're from, a pride in their family and also a pride in their Irish nation. Other aspects we have is that uh, we do not accept this uh, climate alarmism, that uh, we don't buy into the idea that this unfounded notion that the world is going to end in 12 years that we're all going to die from carbon dioxide asphyxiation in a short period of time, and that um, global warming is because of man-made factors. The main factor on global warming throughout millennia is the proximity to the sun, on sunspots in the sun. I think they call it the Malkovich cycles has shown it was a theory at the end of the 19th century. It's been shown to be true only in the 1970s. Is that proximity to the sun and and, and uh, oscillations in the Earth is the major factor in global warming. So for that reason, as we know th from study of biology, that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. NASA satellite imaging over the last 50 years has shown that rising CO2 levels has increased, has made the planet more green in regards to uh, trees, etc. And for that reason, we oppose uh, the unnecessary and unjust carbon carbon tax, which comes ultimately from the European Union. Like, uh, we believe penalizing people for uh, driving to work or for heating their home is unnecessary. We believe it's completely unjust and that uh, the carbon tax is like a poll tax on poor people and we are opposed to it. What we are in favour of is that Ireland, we are in favour of a clean and green Ireland where we have cleaner waters, cleaner air, healthy food, and that Ireland is a beautiful country. We should uh, maintain that, enhance that, make our waters cleaner and uh, things like that. So. We are in favor of, uh, we're not in favor of that this kind of, let's say, American liberal vision of life where money is the be all and end all, and that as long as someone is making money, we can pollute the earth into, into oblivion by making people sick by and give just giving money to big pharma and big business, and that the end of man is just to be a consumer and a producer. Believe that 
Ireland, the, the, the nation of Ireland and Irish people have a higher dignity than that, than just to be a consumer and, and producer on a wet rock. Uh, but we do believe that we, we should reward uh, merit and work, and we would like to enhance the, the ability of people in the country to start their own business, start their own enterprise, to be able to employ themselves, to employ others and provide employment uh, throughout the country. So we are in favour of grown up indigenous industries uh, in Ireland to develop, for instance, our tourism sector that we have to bring in tourists from outside, to take in money, to provide employment and uh, stuff like that. So we can see, so we, one of the big problems we have at the minute is the cost of living crisis. One of the main factors is that is uh, about energy. And energy, we believe that the, one of the ways to uh, lower energy costs is to, well, immediately in the short term, to reopen the two power stations that are there in the Midlands. They're both pretty almost split new. Uh, they're both available to work immediately. They should be opened immediately. In the medium term, we believe that Ireland should start uh, re-drilling and uh, to go forward with the exploration of uh, our huge oil and gas reserves off the Irish coast. Uh, as I said earlier, to uh, cease immediately all the EU-imposed carbon tax, which makes our fuel more expensive. And in the long term, oh yeah, of, of course we agree with the people's ancient right to cut uh, turf in their own land and uh, to, to heat their homes. And the last aspect we would have is that uh, we think we would like to see a state commission of international experts to examine the, the cost, the safety and the efficacy of both tidal and nuclear power in Ireland. Now, to examine has the technology changed and improved over the last number of decades that uh, both tidal and nuclear energy are safe and effective. So we believe that one of the big factors in a uh, cost of living crisis is energy and we believe that we have the solutions to make life in Ireland much easier. Another aspect that we can immediately go into is inflation. Why do we have inflation? That's the big question. Why it just doesn't did you hear Christine Lagarde there on the late late there last Friday where she says, oh, I don't know where uh, where this inflation just came out of nowhere. What do you mean came out of nowhere? Of course, there's a cause and effect as in every other aspect of life. And where inflation came from, the euro, you know, just look at the situation we're in at the minute, where we are entering into the second re recession that we've had in the last 12 years. We're getting boom and bust. We have inflation of about 10% at the minute. And the reason we have is that, that we're in the wrong currency. We don't have our own currency in our own national interest. We have the euro currency, which is always controlled in interest by the ECB, in the interest of France and Germany. And what did the ECB do over the last number of years is that they have quantitative easing, uh, which is basically printing lots of uh, extra euro, uh, so you had large money supply and also you, ha you had low interest rates. Low interest rates and large money supply basically means that, especially during the lockdown, and it was added to by the Irish government, who were paying people these pop payments or furlough payments, uh, paying taxes and pumping money into people who were not working, were not providing any services, so the end effect of the euro was that a lot more money was chasing the same amount of production or services and therefore more money chasing, chasing the same or less services means inflation, that the price goes up. Another aspect that is hurting people's lives, which I believe the Irish Freedom Party has a solution to, is that of immigration. While we are members of the European Union, 
we have free movement of people. It means that 450 million people across the European Union have untrammeled right, cannot be restricted, of coming to live and to reside in Ireland. We believe that we must have full control of immigration, that immigration should only vetted immigration should be allowed. We should know the name, the origin, the criminal record, and also the the, the, the professional capabilities of everybody who comes into Ireland. We want to have an Australian point style system where, well, principle number one is that all decisions in uh, for the governance of Ireland should be for for the benefit of Irish people. Point number two, it, the, those laws should be made only by the Irish people. Point number three, that no laws which are, whose writ runs in Ireland should be made by people we did not elect. Therefore, we are opposed to the imposition of laws which come from Brussels or from Britain. And we believe that Irish people are good enough to make our own laws, to make our own decisions, and just to decide our own destiny in the in the world stage. So we want only by leaving the European Union can we have controlled and vetted immigration that we decide the people who come come into our country and the decision should be not on their desire to come here because there's at any one time there's six million people who want to emigrate in the world at any one time. Uh, of course we can't take that. So we should be the people we should have the control over the numbers and the quality of people who come into Ireland. We can see just this week in Killarney, you have a town of 10,000 people. Now, all of a sudden, you have 3,000 uh, economic migrants, or some of them describe themselves as asylum seekers, although why people from Georgia, safe countries like Georgia, are here uh, seeking asylum, is uh, un their claims are unfounded. They are really uh, fake UGs, and bottom line is they're economic migrants looking for soft touch Ireland to provide free money, free stuff, and, and, and free housing. We are, the government is completely wrong in accepting that, uh, carrying out that policy, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, and the Greens, and also other parties on the left are probably even worse when it comes to open borders like Sinn Fein. Uh, people before profit, Social Democrats, Labour, they're all for open borders, they're all for EU control. We can only get a grip on immigration into Ireland when we leave the European Union and take back control of our borders. We've got to stop this, this system of welfare, free stuff for everybody. It's just crazy, we can't afford it. Uh, and on the point of government spending, let's get on to that now. Uh, government spending, another influence on inflation is that of high government spending. Uh, for example, we, in first, in a matter of principle, we are in favour of less government waste, less government spending, lower personal taxation, and we believe that better decisions are made, more efficient decisions are made when the money is spent by those who earn, who have earned the money. So it's not the public, uh, the state is a very inefficient and wasteful spender of pe people's money. So we are in favor of lower uh, government spending and less government waste. A good example of that, which we would love to slash the funding of, is the ideolog ideological echo chambers of NGOs uh, what is that? Non-government organisations in Ireland. It's a farce that they would be called that because the vast majority of these are actually vast majority of their funding comes from the government. So they are they're funded by the government. Uh, Eight percent of all government spending, or sorry, of all taxpayers' money, uh, which is spent by the Irish government, goes on the NGO sector. There's almost employs a third of a million people. I think there's 32,000 NGOs in the country. Like these, the number needs to be slashed. Only those that provide kind of physical benefit for people in the country should be 
maintained, and especially all those which are ideological echo chambers of the government should be defunded completely, because many of them are looking to fund and encourage mass immigration into Ireland, and then that provides uh, problems. Let's get on now to the housing issue. So mass immigration uh, increases the amount of uh, people in the country. It increases demand for, for houses. It then puts up rents for apartments. As I said, only by leaving the EU can, go, can we get control of, of this. So to cure the housing problem we have, there's too many people people in the country, yeah, we probably don't have enough houses, but even if we started building 30,000 or 35,000 houses per year for all the people in Ireland, we could not keep up with the demand while our borders are open and people are flooding in here in huge numbers. The population of Ireland has increased by 1 million people in the last 20 years, so there's absolutely no way that we as a country, as a nation, can keep up with that rate of demand. We must reduce uh, the rate of immigration into Ireland. We must reduce the demand on, on housing to uh, allow people to be able to buy themselves a house. At the moment, we can see, and this is the reason, whether I, this is one of the reasons why the Irish Freedom Party is going to do better, going, going to do well, in elections coming forward, is that people, for the first time, are really feeling the effect of immigration. So, for the first time, uh, people, like for instance, who are just newly married, they find it very, very difficult to to buy a house. The house prices are too expensive. That young people going to university find it very difficult to to get a an apartment which they can rent or even to share a house by which they, uh, they can rent to stay at an apartment. And the most shocking and the, and the latest travesty, which shows the completely ill-fitted priorities of the current government, is that, uh, I'll give you an example down in Waterford, is that uh, two private home care homes in Waterford were shut down in the last few months. The old people who were in those private care homes were pretty much thrown out on the street. And what happens? The government comes along, offers large financial incentives to these two care homes to what? To take in refuge, like asylum claimants from those who say they're from uh, Ukraine. So, the end of the day, like old Irish people who've contributed to our country, who've built up the, built up, help, build up our island, who supported their families, are pretty much thrown on the street and in their place. The government is subsidising uh, that they be provided for in these care homes. I believe that that's an absolute scandal, and we should never, ever accept it. What other aspects would we like to think about? Yes, and of course, there's a link also between immigration and the increasing rate of crime. Now, this can be seen the whole way across Europe, be it in Sweden, be it Italy, be it Germany or, or France. I remember, for example, there's a study in Germany uh, which is paid by the state. It was done in Lower Saxony University. It showed that uh, 90% in, I think it was 2016, that uh, there was a 90% increase. No. Uh, we see, there was a 90%, no, I see. The, yeah, basically showed that there was a very close link between immigration into Germany and an increase in crime. And I think there was a 10% increase in crime over a year, and 90% of all new crime was carried out by recent immigrants into Saxony and Germany. So we can see that Ireland has become less safe. The rates of um, or Migrants, especially young males, coming into into a country where the country is more free. They have come from a very different culture, different sets of values, and the whole. Uh, there's been a large increase over the last number of years about uh, sexual assaults, etc., and that must be looked at very closely. And other much broader problem is uh, because Ireland, we have our own scumbags as well. 
uh, we can get rid of these people who uh, who kind of lean towards antisocial behaviour, who lean towards uh, criminal criminal behaviour. As I said, Irish people, we've got our own scumbags as well. And the Irish Freedom Party, we are hard on law and order. We believe that antisocial behaviour should be dealt with very firmly. And at the minute, we can see, for example, let's give an example, John Judge Martin Nolan, he's got so many cases of serious cases of sexual assault, of physical assault, and these people have been allowed off with simply suspended sentences. We believe that there should be reform of the judicial system. There must be much more clarity and much harder and longer sentences for, uh, for, for crimes. And the message needs to go out from the doll from th to these judges that there must be harder punishments, longer punishments for people who commit antisocial behaviour to make an order to teach the lesson to these criminals that their behaviour is not acceptable and to make our estates and homes and where we live and our families grow up to make it a much safer country. Uh, what a what other aspects would people like to talk about here? Quickly, does anybody want, instead of a monologue? Um, oh yeah, so the aspect of, the, another aspect I would like to talk about is why, ultimately why we want Ireland to be an independent sovereign country, is that we believe that Irish people are good enough, more than good enough to make our own laws and decide our own, uh, decide our own destiny. It is an absolute scandal. Uh, article, I think it's 29.4 of Bonrach Naheran, states that uh, there's nothing in the Irish con constitution that can constrain or can override our obligations from uh, that we signed up to, to EU treaties. This means ultimately that in matters of EU competence, that EU law is superior to Irish law, to the Irish Supreme court and to the Irish constitution. For myself and for members of the Irish Freedom Party, for anybody who loves Ireland, that is completely unacceptable. We must be able to decide our own laws, to vote into power and vote out of power, to remove those who we don't like anymore by the democratic ballot that we have in Ireland. We must be able to, as a people, decide the destiny of our own country and not have laws Im imposed upon us by the European Union. So I wanted that going forward, that ultimately um, we would be seeking a referendum on EU membership to give the Irish people the right to decide, do we want to be members of this political union? Because I believe we shouldn't be subservient politically, nor can we afford the EU anymore. At the moment, we've been a net contributor to the EU budget since 2013. Uh, last year the year and the year before, our net contribution to the EU budget was 700 million euro. We are heavily indebted as a state. We can't afford EU membership anymore. Uh, they, the EU, they, they always told us, oh, the EU loves us. Really? Really? Well, why did they, in 2013, and to, between 2011 to 13, why did they impose a debt, a private bank debt of 64 billion euro on the Irish taxpayer? They don't, they don't love us. They don't respect Respect us. We were just the whipping boys for the euro currency and, and the banking crisis. So the EU, Brussels, IMF, and the, uh, the ECB and IMF and the European Commission, the Troika, they imposed a debt of 64 billion on the Irish taxpayer. I believe that's a scandal. They also progged, they also took the 21 billion pension fund that was paid for by the Irish people. And we know from study by Catherine, let's say, what's her name? Uh, Dr. Karen Devine of DCU, who looked at Eurostat figures from the EU, she was able to show that since we joined the EU in 1973, that EU boats have taken 215 billions worth of fish out of our waters. So if we want ultimately to side our own borders, have control of our own currency, interest rates, money supply, 
to control how much money we, how our money is spent, who makes our laws, who controls our territorial fishing waters, and also if we want to defend our military neutrality on the world stage, I believe that in global terms that Ireland, which has been a new, militarily neutral country for a long time, we can only maintain, or sorry, we can only again seek meaningful military neutrality only if we become an independent sovereign state again. We are not dictated to by the EU. We are no longer involved in EU battle groups as we are at the minute. We need to get out of PESCO, which is an antechamber to, um, to NATO. We've got to get involved, get out of any involvement with the EU military union, and we should stop giving them money which can be used for multi-purpose. Like, I want to know, I believe it's unbelievable that last year, I think there was 11, uh, there was a number of Irish soldiers uh, off fighting in EU, it was, it was an EU groups fighting off in Mali to defend French interests. That's none of our business. Irish people, I, the lives of Irish people should not be put at risk to defend some EU benefit somewhere else, which has nothing to, to do with us whatsoever. So for all those reasons, I believe we've got, and only the Irish Freedom Party is the only party around which is putting forward that solution that we need sovereignty and we need independence for Ireland. And the other aspect, as I said earlier, the two main pillars of the Irish Freedom Party is that we're looking for a free people in a free country. We believe in personal liberty and also in national sovereignty. One of the main aspects of personal liberty is the right to free speech. I believe that people, how people think uh, is unique to them and how they speak is also unique to them. And people should have a right to express themselves freely and that at the moment the current constitutional position is that there is equality of all citizens before the law what helen mcintee is bringing in with this anti-free which with anti-free speech legislation is that it means that there she introduces inequality uh, uh, between different identity groups uh, within ireland and it she gives special privileges to groups, identity groups chosen by the government, such as, I don't know, homosexuals, uh, people of color, people who are disabled. Uh, basically, we believe in equality of all citizens before the law, not inequality and special privileges for minority groups which are chosen by the government. We believe this legislation by the government is dangerous it's unnecessary. There's already libel laws. There's already laws to do with the incitement to violence. Uh, they're already on the books. They've been used before, but that that it is unacceptable that the government would choose groups to give privileges to and make inequality before the law a new status quo of uh, of Ireland. So there we go. I think that's enough monologue for tonight. We're, we're there. That's almost 30 minutes. I will now let take any questions that you have and I'll uh, take that. Is that fair enough, Paul? Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, that sounds good. I just wanted to ask you a question there uh, about us. Would we be pushing for more money for our military? You know? I, I, military? Yes. Look, I, I... It's not O'Donnell's, what do you call it? Uh, there's a pub there up at... Uh, the one past that Donahue's, uh, well, I, I forget the name of the pub, but anyway, I was introduced to this uh, army sergeant there. It was about a year, well, it's about two and a half years ago now, before the lockdown. And he was an army sergeant. He's got three kids. He was telling me he was getting 54 quid for 12 hour shift in the army, right? How can a man, how could this, like, and he is a sergeant, how could he support three kids on such little money that uh, at the minute the number of soldiers in Oakland Heron sorry the Irish um, the state army is uh, very small it's 
dwindled, I believe, to less than 10,000. The resources for the Navy, for the Air Force, are pathetic. We, 100 years after our partial in independence, uh, our air defense is basically controlled by Britain. Uh, any fisherman can tell you that uh, if your boat goes down in Wexford, it will not be a Irish helicopter coming to get you. It will be a British helicopter uh, air sea rescue. Uh, I believe that we should be, as a sovereign state, we need to be responsible. It's as a sign of maturity as a country, we need to be responsible for our own defence. And I believe that we need to heavily invest in uh, Ogle and Heron in the equipment to increase the wages of the soldiers and the Navy, etc., to make a, a career in those uh, institutions a viable option for, for young men and women. We need to be mature and invest in these things that we can properly defend our country. And uh, the whole, I believe they, they're basically running down uh, the Irish defence system so that, oh yeah, we can't do it ourselves. So we need to bring in EU battle groups. We need to be, as we were last summer, we were completely reliant. Would you believe that Irish waters were protected? Uh, the fisheries protection was done by EU boats. It wasn't done by Irish boats. I believe that's a scandal. We should be able, uh, as a nation state, to protect our own people our own waters and we've got to invest heavily in the army the navy and the air force that we can defend ourselves and provide services for example to the fishermen that is necessary and it's just a matter of we have to have self-respect as a country very much i agree German. i agree with you i'm going to uh open the floor now to does anyone else want to ask herman any questions or have you something to say I just want to ask, if you don't mind, um, Herman, uh, just a quick question there. Like, uh, in relation to voting, I mean, we all know a lot of these voting systems are rigged. Not trying to be negative, but that's just the fact. Cops take away the voting ballots, and God knows what happens in between. But just trying to guess um, parties that we all want to get in power, like the Irish Freedom Party and Reclaim Ireland and things like that. Um, to get us uh, how far away do you think i mean first off i think trace someone was sending around a thing there about um people should be registering to vote um, maybe for next year by the 25th of november or they won't be allowed to vote and second off how far do you predict yourself um the irish freedom party get a seat in the doyle well i will tell you straight up is that since we started four years ago the wind has been in our face uh, that it's been a hard slog uh, there's been no help uh, by the press who absolutely hate us big tech all uh, these social media companies twitter facebook instagram they all detest they'll do anything to curb us getting our message out uh, it's been a hard slog but just over the last two months and I do believe it's the thing that people are starting to feel the effect of inflation, and they're also feeling the effect of large, huge numbers of huge rate of immigration into the country. They're feeling the impact of it. They don't like it, and now they're looking around. And I have been contacted so many times in the last month by people asking me, "Am I running candidates here? Am I running candidates in Donegal? Are you, do you have candidates running in, in Cork?" So the amount of interest that I can see around the country is of a different, completely different level than it was in the last four years. So I can see for the first time the wind is at our back that we have been offering these solutions since we started four years ago, but only now as people say, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and the carbon tax thing, I can see now, and they want to control immigration, I can see now why they, why they want to do that. Now, on the issue as you raised there, about why it's important to, to register to vote, I, I believe it is like, um, let me explain why, because your vote is your voice. Now, people, some people 
are more interested in football, more interested just seeing their family. They think politics doesn't affect them. But believe me, it's a very naive view. Even if you're not interested in politics, politics is very interested in you. So in regards, like even if you homeschool, they will they will demand that you register with the state. They if you're even if you have like a, a flock of five sheep in your front garden, you have a kind of two acres out the back of your house, you have to they demand that you register and that you no sorry that you have that flock registered, that you're allowed to have lamb chops for your dinner. Politics, now we saw there during the lockdown that the, those parties in power, they were happy to impose the lockdown. The so-called opposition parties uh, all on the left, be it Sinn Féin, be it Into, be it People Before Profit, they were all happy they were all happy to impose the lockdown there into their in favor of was it uh, mandatory hotel quarantine until summer of 2021 and the more left they were the more in favor they were of the lockdown these parties they are coming for your freedom the only way that you will be able to stop them imposing these draconian laws that like for instance this free speech legislation being introduced by Ellen McEntee Really, the only way to stop it politically is to register your vote, to make sure you vote on the day, to tell all your family and friends about the importance of voting, and use your vote as your voice to to tell these politicos that no, we don't want mass immigration, we don't want carbon tax, no, we don't want curbs on our free speech, no, we don't want to be told, can we go to work, can we see our families? We want sovereign, independent country where we, as best we can, as a mature people and as a mature nation, decide our own laws and our own destiny. And like, if these, if you detest everything that these politicians stand for, what they've tried to do over the last number of years, well, you've got to register your vote and you've got to vote these people out. You've got to re let me put it very simply. You've got to register your vote and make sure you exercise your vote. You've got to replace replace those politicians in the doll because otherwise they're going to replace you. And the whole thing, if you look at the history of nations over millennia, I can't remember who said it, but someone said, is that a nation that goes down fighting always reappears in history. But those nations that give up without a fight, they ne never reappear. I believe the next number of years is crucial in the history of our nation where our country is being swamped by economic migrants. The laws, so many of these laws coming from Brussels, from the World Economic Forum, from the UN, are being imposed by these patsies in the doll. We've got to get rid of these politicians, these parties in the doll. And if you believe that Sinn Féin are any better, with all their hard left policies, than Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and the Green Party, that's delusional. All the left, they're even worse. They want, they believe in a big state. They believe in control by these multinational organizations. We've got to get, as I said, replace them before they replace us. And the only mechanism we have to do that politically is to register to vote and use your vote and also tell everybody else to exercise their vote. Carmen, I, 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 I Just let me finish off. I believe this, and I know there's a few people, sadly, I think, it's uh, it's like a cargo cult, a naive, at best it's naive, at worst it's a cargo cult of desperation, where people go around and say, oh, if you don't register to vote, oh, you don't have to pay tax, the world doesn't affect you, politics, politics, the laws that they make don't affect you, it's complete, naive, it's rubbish, and I wish these people, they seem, it's as if they're working for Sinn Féin and Fine Gael, that they're going around and telling seemingly only patriots to de to to deregister their vote. Well, I believe these people are ultimately traitors to our nation. That we've got to go out and tell people register to vote, use your vote, and use your vote for the Irish Freedom Party, and go for a party that believes in Irish freedom for Irish people. I I've been saying it for weeks. You know, we, since we all came together now, and I've been watching what's going on. I've been saying it for weeks that this is the only show in town. 
everybody needs to look at this because we are the only ones who are speaking out against anything and we're the only ones that are saying anything nobody else and we have to get this grassroots we need to go out to the people and talk to the people in the communities and let them know what's going on and how we can stop this and we will get the votes like i know i know a lot of people here on reclaim can't afford to join the party listen yeah. you can't afford to join the party or you don't want to join the party for whatever reasons all we ask is that you think of our candidates and look after our candidates and give them your votes when it comes time to vote but as i said this is the only show in town i'm telling you now i've been saying it from day one I as agree well with you, Paul. and herman um all of the policies from the irish freedom party was what i was attracted to and herman was correct in relation to the anti-speech and anti-hate laws and um, they've already been enacted in the european parliament and they've already been passed and they are now eu directives and um, it's not only helen mcintyre's anti-speech laws it's also ingrained in the online media safety and regulations bill which is going through different stages it's also ingrained in that in relation to misinformation and disinformation and also limitations in the electoral reform act further on down when it comes to advertising for political parties it is this present government they will deem what is misinformation and disinformation accordingly so again that limits political parties on wishing to speak out in relation to discourse dissent discussion and debate in relation to failed policies by this present government if it doesn't align with their narrative it will be deemed misinformation so everything that Herman has pointed out I was never anti I was never a euro skeptic before in my life and I only started researching the Irish Parliament or sorry the European Parliament going into their um, web portal and actually go and look at their what is it that they're drawing up in in, in directives and um, I, I have to honestly say that I, I want us to leave the European Union I've never been a Eurosceptic before in my life, but I sure as hell am now. Because even the Climate Change and Low Emissions Act, which passed into law this summer, there's a huge amount of EU directives um, all within the body of that act, our own domestic governance, where we have to adhere to European directives and also United Nations 20 sustainability goals for which those who are not aware those who sit on those committees, most of those individuals are members of the Chinese Communist Party. So, yes, that's ingrained in the Climate Change and Low Emissions Act as well. But everything that Herman has said makes absolute sense. Also, as well, we would like to think that we can invite back home all Irish, both men and women who've left this country to travel to places like Canada, Australia those who have professions who've gone out there who cannot return home presently because of the state of the country and can't settle back in Ireland. We would like to have our Irish home as well. <clears throat> but um, I would, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I, I live in the Southeast. I've never been involved in politics before. It's not anything I had an interest in in a, in a huge scale, but I think everybody here in this room is, I would like to say, like to think that you're, all singing on the same hymn sheet you know nobody wants to get involved in politics but we've been left with no choice and i do hope to run for waterford in the southeast so that's why i've joined the irish freedom party an ordinary irish citizen who's come out of her house who doesn't want to see our national sovereignty stomped into the ground i don't want our irish men and women joining a european army fighting battles which are not ours to begin with i want our fishermen i live in Dunmore east which is a fishing village. I want our fishing, fishermen to be able to reap what they sow in relation to yielding fish without any limitations and where favour is given to other fishermen from different European countries and what they can yield and what they cannot yield. And Paddy Last, as the Irish Freedom Party has that slogan, and our Irish fishermen are Paddy Last in that respect. Also as well, in the Climate Change and Low Emissions Act, which came into law this year, our Irish agricultural sector is going to be decimated and rural Ireland. I mean, look what's happened already in relation to the turf ban, but I mean, that's not even the icing on the cake. If you actually sit down and read all of the different statutory instruments on the Climate Change and Low Emissions Act, 
it would it's an eye opener i mean at the end of the day these individuals who have helped devise that want zero percent zero carbon in the at the end of the day that's what they're all striving for at the end of the day but um it's going to be it's going to have a horrible impact and it is having an impact already on our irish farming community and that needs to stop also herman was talking about the banking system the imf um our inflation since we joined the euro that's dictated by the european union whereas if we leave the european union our own inflation that can be dictated by the central bank here in ireland and we don't have to look to the european union in relation to different interest rates as well there's just so much benefit in leaving the european union that i never thought imagined but I'm definitely a Eurosceptic now, and all of the policies that are there for the Irish Green Party um, align with what needs to be done is to get across the floor of Dáil Éireann for the first time in the history of the state, turn our heads like a seat on the voice into all different sectors within Dáil Éireann, all different department sectors. That means, yeah. and yeah, also, yeah. well, probably, probably Hermer for the first time in the history of the state, standards and public office, tighten that up. So those in senior civil servant positions, like whether you're assistant principal, principal officer or otherwise, that if you make wrong choices and decisions which directly affect Irish citizens, and even if those decisions end up killing people, that they will be brought to account and they will be deemed responsible because that seems to be something that's missing in Irish politics. They seem to be able to do anything they want and they don't adhere to code of ethics in standards and public office. So if we could tighten that up, we would absolutely 100% do so. Anyway, that's my two cents worth. On what Thanks, very do, much, yeah. Thanks very much, Maria. Thanks very much, Maria. I wanted to get a couple yeah, more people in there. Eddie, 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 oh, Eddie, are you there, Eddie? Do you want to say something there? Yeah. Eddie, I, 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 uh, Herman, yeah, look, just, it, it's impressive enough there listening to you, like in, in fairness now. I, I, I suppose I was kind of, um, I was re reclaimed there from the start, but. Uh, kind of drifted away, but um, I'm I'm back listening tonight. Now, anyway, we won't go into it. But uh, you know, I, I was happy enough with what I heard. There. I suppose um, you know the way, like we we'll say, what's being pushed in the in the um, in the UK at the moment, like everything is being blamed on them leaving the EU. Yes. Kind of now, I suppose it'll probably be different by the time the elections will come along. Around people will probably be more open to. A different um, perception of things, but I, I, you know that that fear is there among people that if we leave the EU and and everything you're saying, I, 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 it's correct and I understand it, but it's like people kind of feel we're doomed if we leave the EU. You know, even my own mother, there she's eighty three, she was always against the EU. She said it isn't the EU that built Ireland. We were actually getting on our feet anyway, but they just give that narrative. We were at, like we loads of industry from like we tanneries, sugar factories, uh, boot factories, leather factories. You know, uh, paint, you know, we were agriculture wise. You know, we she said we were actually getting on our feet, and and it's an illusion to think the DU has really helped us. So I, I was just wondering how will you counteract that kind of fear with people? As I said, even though the, the situation might be different by the time we get. Yeah. It, to the election people might be more woken up yeah the one of the big problems we have in ireland is that the establishment media as we saw there during the lockdown are simply mouthpieces for the uh, for the political establishment instead of during the lockdown instead of asking hard questions to those in power they basically took the press releases from the government and basically relay them to the people without any questions for those who give out the press releases and at the minute in Ireland, the press are completely pro-EU. The reason that ultimately that I'm, uh, I'm an Irish nationalist, because that I'm a Eurosceptic, I believe that we're good enough to make, to decide our own destiny. I'm from the bog side in Derry. I was brought up an Irish Republican stroke nationalist. For me, the EU is a British Empire writ large. Simple as that. Where and he, even it's even worse than the British Empire because. We had 16% of the votes in Westminster when uh, Ireland uh, was in the British Empire. Under the EU, we have 1% of the votes. 
that in the Council of Ministers. So politically, we're even uh, much weaker than we were even under the British Empire. So for me, the ideas of multinational empires that make laws and impose upon you is a very, very bad idea. And anyway, the whole sweep of history, when they formed the, the UN, I think 1945 or 40, sorry, 1945, 47, whatever year it was, there, there was pretty much only 50 countries in the UN. The whole sweep of history is for multinational empires to break down into nation states and for the number of nation states to increase. So now today there's, a, there's just over, I believe, 200 nation members of the United Nations. So as I said, the whole sweep of history is for more nation states to emerge. The problem that is going on in Britain at the minute, I believe, is that the elite, those MPs, those ministers and the leaders of all those political parties, they are pretty much just like here, that the media and the political class are pro-EU because, wait, the EU is good for them personally. It's good for the elites. It hurts people, working people, who are affected by mass immigration and competition, uh, cheap, sorry, an oversupply of cheap labour. So that's the reason that the people in the north of England voted overwhelm overwhelmingly for Brexit because they wanted to control the laws, control their immigration policy, whereas those in uh, the Libby Dibbies in Notting Hill in London, uh, the rich, the stockbroker belt in Surrey, they voted to remain. They are the people, the AMPs, who currently, in, who currently favour they're not in favour of utilising the freedoms that are used by, by Brexit. They are kind of sota voce remainers. That is a problem. Now, also, we've just gone through the whole thing of the lockdown, COVID, etc. I believe it's pretty difficult at this early stage to ascertain has Brexit economically been good or bad for the EU. Of course, over in Ireland, we're all only going to hear Brexit is bad, 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 bad. But let me put this to you, and this is a, a fact. We have, with the United States of Europe, we have no free trade agreement. We're not in a political union. They can't impose laws upon us. And we have uh, anybody from the States cannot come to live here just as they freely like it. We sell 32% of our goods, export side, 32% of our goods to the US. For the EU, we're in a political union. We have to give them money every, huge amount of money every year. They, they get 85% of all fish caught in Irish waters goes to EU boats. Uh, they have a huge amount of sway over the human rights legislation, uh, over who can come into our country. But whereas with the US, we sell 32% of our goods, to the EU countries, we only sell 38%. So why do we have all these negative things about EU membership, the cost, the imposition of laws, for what is only 6% of our exports? So I don't believe we can afford the EU anymore. I certainly don't believe that we need it. Yes, I don't believe that Brexit also, Britain... Well, Herman. As we know, the EU and Britain are no, are no more. Um, Ireland is the United Kingdom's biggest exporter. They, they, they export over 70%. We import over 70% of products and, and stuff like that from the UK. Okay. You know, imagine if we left the European Union, we'd be able to come into our own trade deal with the United Kingdom, as well as outside of the EU state as well. I see there, when you were talking about the, the House of Commons and stuff like that and the Lords, um, in 2020 there was 32 Irish passports belong to members in the House of Lords. There are now 321 Irish passports given out to members of Parliament in the United Kingdom since yeah, I don't know if that's a good, uh, I think that's a negative, Maria. The reason why, I believe the reason all those MPs applied for Irish passports is they can then say, oh, I'm an EU citizen. So that's, it's a double edge. I gather that's much as why they were, were looking for them and got them, you know? No. I, I believe, I say that Sorry. Irish passport is being thrown around far too easily. Uh, I think it's Article 6, where it's the duty of Irish citizens 
or members of the Irish nation. To the loyalty should be to the Irish nation. So I believe that people who who just want it as a, like a, a, a passport or, or of convenience, I don't I don't agree with that at all. No, but you're in Ireland. Invoked as well, yeah, invoke them. You know, you you don't have to be born in Ireland, but yet, um, there is a scheme that if you say set up a business in Ireland and if you um give so much money over a certain period of time, that you, they do actually grant you um an Irish Irish citizenship or an Irish passport, um, in return for that. Um, I think actually one person was. Um, a Chinese individual, I think he bought a hotel, a couple of hotels, or uh, one in Cork in particular, uh, only recently. And um, yeah, he's been granted a, a passport. They've just announced, in the sorry, Maria, I don't to speak over you. They've just announced one million new Irish passports handed out this week. It was announced there on the media. And if, I don't, if you don't mind, can we just go back to the EU there for a second? And... You know, we're actually less than 1%. When we look at Poland, they have 54 members in the EU. Ireland, up until Brexit, we had only 11. We now have 13. Three of them are independents that talk about every other country out except Ireland every time they speak, because I watch um, the EU um, meetings weekly every time it's on. You can Anyone can watch what's going on out there live. Um, I spent three days a week on that and three days a week in Gangster House watching all the back meetings. And this is where we see what's coming. And we know well before it hits Ireland what's coming our way. Um, so when we look at the 13 that are there now, MEPs for Ireland, you have two Greens, you have three independents that act like they don't even live here. And the rest are Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. So when we have only 13 MEPs over there at the moment, and we do need to get over there, but there's no vice for Ireland there, as far as I'm concerned. thing that Maria said, actually, when you think about it, so many of the laws that people aren't aware that come from the EU originally, that value-added tax is an EU tax. Like the carbon tax comes from, the idea comes from the EU. This stuff on uh, constricting the freedom of, spe uh, the freedom of speech of Irish people comes from the EU. The most dangerous draconian act, I believe, in the last, maybe perhaps in my lifetime, was the EU co uh, digital covert certificate, where our right to travel, our right to work, our right to go and see your family and friends was constrained by, it was so-called be a passport, but it was actually a way of constraining people. I couldn't go in, uh, like it constricted it was absolutely what happened there in the lockdown, this whole imposition. We, we would be strongly opposed to the imposition of digital ID. The reason why is because it gives more power to the state, to big banks and to big tech to control our lives. That's why we're very in favour of, and we would encourage people to join a campaign, the Cash is King, to really, where they can, where possible, to use cash and to insist that cash is used. It is a legal tender, and we should be have the right to use it in various shops and in financial transactions. But the main reason is to ensure our privacy and our freedom uh, and independence from the, the big state, the big banks, and uh, big tech. Speaking on big tech and money, Ursula von der Leyen in May announced the European Digital Wallet when I looked nicely at it. It's just it's just a nice frilled name for the credit score system. But that was launched in May, the European Digital Wallet. And obviously weren't successful with the COVID-19 certifications for those who didn't sign up. But um, this is really the same format and there are overseas stakeholders involved in it as well. Eventually they want to amalgamate absolutely everything. It's like people's um, public services card, but it will have absolutely everything eventually on it, your banking, all of your doctor's details, hospital details, um, your shopping, everything. And also verification, if you want to buy things online, that it's already been verified through your banking system, is the European digital wallet. It was piloted in Italy earlier this year, and um, 
that was announced in May by Ursula von der Leyen while you were speaking on that subject. The, the whole thing of the damage caused by the euro, as I said, it's done great damage to our economy twice within the last 12 years. It shows the importance of having our own national currency, that we can control our interest rates and money supply. But another, as mentioned there, about the digital euro, which has been introduced, it's related to what you said there, Maria, uh, this digital wallet, and the whole thing of the imposition that we must be connected digitally. And the problem with that is that uh, it gives more control. We saw there what happened in Canada, where the government took money, it prevented the truckers and those who supported the truckers, and even people who gave money to the trucker fund from taking money out of their bank accounts. That because is that the government had the power to track uh, people's identity and connect it up with the banks and then refuse withdrawals. That power we should never, ever give to the government or to the, or to the banks. Uh, going forward, so hopefully there will be an election, there certainly will be a general election within the next two and a half years. In that meantime, I believe we, as a party and as a people, I, I would first urge people to join up, join the party if they can, if they cannot, uh, to still help out the party with leafleting. Our priority going forward over the short term is cash, candidates, and commons. To get commons up, active in every county and every constituency in the county, to get people to get out from behind kind of like social media, from Telegram, from, I don't know, WhatsApp groups all around. I think we've done social media and WhatsApp groups into, into the ground over the last number of years. I believe now is in time to meet up people in your locality, in real life, to meet each other, familiarize yourself, to get support with these people and to organize themselves into commons that people can go around in groups and leaflet their neighbours, tell their friends and their family about the Irish Freedom Party, the importance of registering in the election and the reasons why to vote for the Irish Freedom Party and get in IFP candidates into the doll that we can take in and be a proper opposition to the establishment uh, political parties that are, that are in the doll. So we need more candidates and I would like people here listening here today to one of the purposes of Reclaim Ireland and the Irish Freedom Party working together is to gather up candidates who are putting themselves forward. We will be looking to run as many candidates as possible, good candidates, in the next general election. And to do that, people have to put themselves forward. And from that, we then have a large selection of candidates. And we, we are looking to put these candidates forward to the public as early as possible to give them a, a longer run-in that they can make themselves known among the electorate. They can go around and campaign and canvas with their friends and supporters around their constituency and people can know about them. Look, the, the, the political atmosphere in the country is changing very quickly and we need to take advantage of it very, very quickly. So I'd ask you to come along, join the party, it's fun, it's also very important. And do you know what? We can have success. I believe the party of Vox in Spain went from 0.2% to 15% of the vote in a very, I believe when it was in about two or three years. So if we've got to catch this wind and we've got to build up the structures of the commons across the country, that we can be ready to take in more members because it's going to be a very rough winter with this cost of living crisis. People are going to feel the impact of the inflation, increasing food prices, increase, increasing energy prices. Like this government have made a balls of the country. They're running our country into the ground. Immigration thing is impacting people more and more each day. And now is the time we've got to grab the chance in front of us and we've got to make the best of it. So I would ask you, come along, join us, and let's make a good job of it. Let's make a country worthy of ourselves and of our children because time is short and the changes that are 
going to happen in the next few years. We don't want, we want to make the best for our country and not let it slide into oblivion as it, where it's going at the moment. As I said earlier, it's the only show in town. And lads, you only have to look at this man. This man is transparent. This man is telling you everything he, you need to know. You look at his videos, he tells you everything that's going on in the country where you don't hear it anywhere else. This is the way forward. This is the only way we're going to take back our country is if we do this this way. Also, as well, for those who are listening to dispel any things that you read in mainstream media in relation to the Irish Freedom Party, they're not an extremist party. They're not far right. They're not... Um, they're not anti-immigration, you know, they want proper vetting criteria, you know, my son-in-law's father's from Afghanistan, his mother's from Ukraine, I certainly wouldn't be aligning myself to a party that's racist like you hear in mainstream media, all the insert slur in relation to this party, and um, they're good robust policies, and um, I believe it's the only party, and we're ordinary Irish citizens, you know, no, nobody's there with an ego, or anybody to be climbing political ladders as such, but um, good, robust policies. And I do believe that if we do not get across the floor of Dáil Éireann in 2025, we will not recognise our country and it will be the point of no return. We'll never, we will not recognise our country from here on in afterwards because we'll be, not that we're not already, but we'll be on an apple hold by the European Union and in relation to me looking in at their directives that they've been passing in in loads of different areas even the european medicines agency they're all marxist communist policies which have been slid in there by individuals who've been flying to conferences year in year out including our own domestic governments the same individuals have been flying across to um, a certain country and getting all of their directives and putting them into our own domestic governments for many many years dangerous policies Can I just answer the question there that was asked earlier on the, the register on the 25th of November? Um, the register is updated monthly, but except for in October, November, when they bring the whole year register together, I think it was um, AI, a number of them there that asked that question. So, yes, they put the whole year's register together before the 25th. It is best to get on the register by then, but it is not an end call, to be honest. They do add an extra register after the 25th of November. I just wanted to answer that question to that gentleman earlier. Lot, that's the question. That's exactly what I wanted to hear because I want to get it out to as many people as possible, you know. And also, I just want to say one quick thing. Like, I knew, I knew I've always been a Eurosceptic, always from day dot. And I, when I voted no for the Lisbon Treaty all those years ago, and they just voted again until they got the answer that we wanted, they wanted, sorry. I knew then we had no democracy, and it's gone, it's spiraled down now to this fucking, as that last lady said, this Marxist communism regime, you know, it's more and more tightening the screws, pushing out our freedoms more and more, and it absolutely blows my mind. You, you need to walk up to people on the street and slap them into the face. Are you fucking asleep? Can you not, you blow... It just blows my mind how it's so obvious and so clear to us and to so many, they're just walking around in a fucking, in a trance, you know, there's something in the water, like, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, uh, as I said, like, this, this is, uh, this has gone beyond a joke and it really escalated, escalated during the scamademic with these communist Chinese lockdowns that were designed to push out the fiat currency and bring in the, Social credit score, you know. During the lockdown was an absolute scandal, and we've got to ensure that we need to get rid of these politicians who imposed it. So it was all Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Green Party, as I said, Sinn Féin, people before problem. They were all in favour of it, every last one of them. And the more left wing they were, the more they wanted it. The so-called opposition wanted a lockdown, which is harder and longer so we've got to get rid of all these people all got rid of get rid of all that eu digital COVID cert the idea of di digital identity and uh, you know we've the, now is the time so i'd ask people to join up join up the party in local commons get involved meet up 
And we've got to, look, there's no use us depending on social media companies like Facebook, Instagram, all these, like basically, they're all these kind of, they get their ideas from America. They're all woke, libby lefties. They hate people like us who have a sense of place, a sense of belonging, a sense of family and nationhood, pride in who we are as a people. They are opposed to everything that we are, everything that we stand for. We've got to protect ourselves. We need to get together as a people. We need to organize and then mobilize and come election time, stick that, <laughs> sorry, the, way, the way I say it with an Northern accent, say, put the vote in the ballot box <laughs> uh, yeah, where the sun, no, no, I wouldn't say. Uh, like, we've got to make it clear that this is an important, vital time for the future of our country, for the future of our freedoms, and we've got to grab it with both hands now. Now, for politics, I was never, uh, okay, I was always interested in politics because I grew up in the bog side during the Troubles, and of course the whole idea of national self-determination and democratic self-determination was vitally important, and I suppose, yeah, that, that's where I get an interest. But being a member of a political party, no, I had no no interest, and I never was in a member of someone before. So. I formed with other people, formed this party because I want, as I said, personal freedom, national sovereignty. This is the vehicle. Join up, get involved, and tell everybody you know. This is our chance and this is our time. We got we got to take it. You know what? I've kept you kept you all for an hour and almost fifteen minutes. Paul, have you had enough yet? Have you surrendered? I have, yeah. Well, to listen, I could listen to you all night, mate. But listen. If there's no more questions there, like I'd like to thank you all for attending the Force People's Forum. By the people, for the people, of the people. Thank you to Herman and anyone else who asked questions or spoke tonight. And watch the Reclaim or the Street and Movement Telegram page. And join, make sure you join the local come-ons and you will see up and coming events. So thank you, Herman. Thank you, everybody, for coming on board tonight. And please, God, we'll talk again shortly. Thank you very much, everyone.